Okay, now we're going to look at how we can visualize different types of distributions. And one type of distribution is a symmetric distribution. And a symmetric distribution usually has the mean and the median in about the same place. And the tails, the left tail and the right tail, are about the same size. So you can think of it as almost having a mirror down the middle with the same shape on either side of the mirror. So what you're looking at here is a picture of the distribution. If we had a histogram, this data set is approximately symmetric. Notice how the highest point is in the middle, and then we have tails going off on either side. And here's a box plot that we would have for a symmetric distribution. Again, uh, the median, this point, right in the middle, and uh, our two hinges are equally spaced from the middle. Our minimum and our maximum are equally spaced from the middle. In a symmetric distribution, Typically, the mean and the median are the same. So I've pulled up Minitab, and I have three sets of data. I have grade point averages, I have the salaries for the Green Bay Packers, and I have the heights for the Chicago Bears. When well, you think about grade point averages, would you expect them to be symmetric? Would you expect there to be an average in the middle and then tails of either side? Same way with salaries. Well, let's take a look at the Bears' heights first. And I'm going to actually do a histogram for the Chicago Bears heights in inches. And if I do histo C3, let's take a look at what that looks like. And you'll notice that is essentially a symmetric distribution. In the middle, we have that situation, tails on either side, about the same. And if we look at a box plot, what will we expect the box plot to look like? Box plot C3. Again, median in the middle, the Q3 hinge and the Q1 hinge are about the same distance from the median and the min and excuse me the min and the max are also equally spaced from the middle and in this case we would expect the mean and the median to be about the same so let's describe that data set and let's see what we have there if we describe C3 indeed you'll notice that the mean 73.89 and the median 74 about the same Okay, so looking at the picture, I have a symmetric distribution earlier, and that is one type of distribution, again, median in the middle, equal balance on both sides for the hinges, and for the min and for the max. We also could have a left skewed, or sometimes called negatively skewed data set, where there is a large hump on the right side of the distribution, then it tails off to the left side. Can you think of a data set that might follow that sort of model? Where all the numbers are captured towards the top, and then it's a long distance from the mean or median down to the minimum value. And you'll notice these low numbers on the minimum value will pull the mean towards the left. So in a left skewed situation, you expect the mean to be less than the median. Uh, here is a left skewed type of histogram, and here is a left skewed type of box plot. You will notice here, again, that the median is closer to the maximum. The left hinge, Q1, is further away than the right hinge, Q3, from the median, and there's long distance from the left hinge down to the minimum value. So this is an example of a left skewed data set. Now going to Minitab, we had grade point averages and we had Packers salaries. Which of those might have a left skewed data set? Well, let's try the grade point average and see if that fits. If we do the histogram of C1, you will notice large numbers up near 3.6, 3.7. Nobody could have a grade point average above 4. That's an artificial top. And then the numbers tail down to the left side. So indeed, grade point averages for this random selection of students seems to follow a left skewed pattern. And let's take a look at the box plot for this same data set. Box plot for the grade point averages. Box plot C1. What do we get? Again, notice this situation. The minimum is actually seen as an outlier. Notice the Q3 hinge is relatively close to the median and there's a big distance between the Q1 hinge 
and the median. And then also notice this tail is longer. And in our class, we're not going to differentiate between outliers. So you can go ahead and extend that all the way down to the minimum, in which case the left tail is significantly longer than the right tail. So this also is an example of a box plot of a left skewed data set. So obviously, if there's a left skewed data set, also called negatively skewed data set, there should also be a right skewed data set. So notice what a right skewed data set looks like. Long tail on the right. These numbers on the right are going to pull the mean away from the mode. Uh, mode median is probably in between there somewhere. So as the mean gets pulled to the right of the median, the data set will be right skewed. So here's an example of a histogram of a right skewed data set. And here's an example of a box plot of a right skewed data set. So as we go back to our mini tab lecture, mini tab session, we have grade point averages, we have Packers salaries, and we have Chicago Bears heights. So this time we're going to look at the salaries of the Green Bay Packers and look what the shape of that distribution appears to be. So I'm going to say describe C2. And we're going to say, we'll look at that in a minute, we'll say histogram C2. Try that first. Spelling counts. Histogram space C2. And indeed you can see all of the numbers on the left side and a long tail going to the right. And if we look at a box plot of that, let's take a look at a box plot of C2. What do we have there? Lots of outliers. So if we think about this as being one long tail, you can see very, very short distance from the minimum to the lower hinge, very short distance from the lower hinge to the median, relatively large distance from the median to the upper hinge, and very large distance from the upper hinge to the maximum value. So this is a perfect example of a right skewed data set. Financial data is often right skewed because typically the numbers can get as high as they want to get, but there is usually some artificial number that is a minimum. So if we look at the descriptive statistics of this set, if we say describe C2, you will see what we have. The minimum value of 315,980 might be the NFL minimum, but the maximum is a very large number. The maximum salary on this team is $7 million. Hence, we have that difference. Now, also take a look at the difference between the mean and the median. Notice the mean is 170, excuse me, the mean is 1,204,613. And the median is 550,000. So the mean and the median aren't very close at all. In fact, the mean is quite a bit larger than the median, which we would expect in this type of data set, a right skewed data set. And if we take a look at the GPAs, if we say describe C1, looking at the GPAs, what are we going to have? This time you will notice that the mean is less than the median. The GPAs are left skewed, so that left tail is going to make the mean be a little bit smaller than the median or than the mode in that value. So again, we have three types of distributions. We have symmetric distributions. In this case, the heights were symmetric. We have left skewed distributions with the long tail on the left with all the numbers near the top. That was grade point averages. And we have right skewed distribution, financial data, salaries of the Green Bay Packers, where we have a situation where most of the numbers are on the left side, and then the tail gradually goes off to the right.